everyone. Did you know that April is National Poetry Month? So we're going to continue our exploration of poetry by looking at the tools or literary devices that poets use to make their poems more interesting so the readers can visualize their poetry in their minds. So to do that, we're going to focus on a literary device called imagery. Let me write it up here at the top of our page. Imagery. Now take a look at the word itself. Do you see the word image in there? When you think of the word image, what do you think of? Do you think of pictures? Something that you see? Well, imagery is a way for poets to make pictures in their readers' minds. And to do that, they use the senses. Our sense of sight, our sense of smell, uh, our ability to hear, touch, and taste. So by appealing to these different senses, poets can make pictures in their readers' minds. And that's what imagery is. It uses the senses to make a picture in people's minds. So I'm going to take a look at a poem called Noise Day by Shel Silverstein. You can look up um, on Google who Shel Silverstein is and look at some of his poetry. He's an incredible poet and writer of stories. Let's hear the poem. Let's have one day for girls and boysies when you can make the grandest noises. Screech, scream, holler and yell, buzz a buzzer, clang a bell, sneeze, hiccup, whistle, shout, laugh until your lungs wear out. Now let me ask you, what sight was being a, what uh, sense was being appealed to in this poem? Did you think maybe your sense of hearing? And if you did, then you are correct. Look at the key words. Screech, scream, holler, even the word noises is in there. In fact, almost this whole poem allows you to hear what the reader wants you to hear, um, what the poet wants you to hear for this poem. Here's another one, Fireflies by Evelyn Stein. See what sense is being appealed to here. Look, look down in the garden how, the firefly lights are flitting now. A million tiny sparks I know flash through the pinks and golden glow. And I am very sure that all have come to light a fairy ball. And if I could stay up, I'd see how gay the fairy folks can be. Now, what sense do you think was being appealed to here? Here's a key word. That's right. It's your sense of sight, your ability to see. All right, so here's the things that I see. I see a garden with fireflies. They're flitting or flying about. A million tiny sparks, colors of pinks and a golden glow. Can you see these things in your mind? If you were to read this poem in your head, what would you see? So that's what the poet wants you to do, is to be able to see an image or a picture in your mind. Okay, so I'd like you to take from your learning package, uh, your poetry booklet. You should have this page in there. So what we're gonna do is read one more poem and then I want you to do this activity and then you just have one more activity to do for this week. Okay, so this poem is called The Way I Play Soccer. This might be a poem you can connect to. It's by Natasha Niemi. I want you to think about the senses that are being appealed to in this poem. Sweat streams down my face and my skin turns red under the watchful eye of the sun. The sound of cleats pounding the earth is deafening as my enemies charge down the field towards me. I can sense the shooter is going to miss. All at once the ball collides into my chest. Screams of victory roar across the field. The grass-stained game ball rests, rests lovingly between my two hands. All right, first of all, I want you to think about what position does the person saying this poem play in soccer? Look for some key words. They're able to hold the ball in their two hands. Enemies are charging down the field towards them. What position? I think it's the goalie. And if you thought that too, then I think you're right. Okay, so what senses are appealed to in this poem? You're gonna fill in this chart to organize your thinking. Let me get you started. I'm just going to pick one of the senses, hearing, sight, taste, touch, or smell, and I'm going to write it here. I'll just put hearing. Can you find a poem from the uh, a line from the poem that appeals to your sense of hearing? Well, I see the word sound right there, so I bet you any money that's a line that, that's appealing to my sense of sound or hearing. So I would just write that line out. The sound of cleats. Pounding the earth, whoopsie, pounding the earth is deafening. 
Now, what does the word deafening mean? It means that something is super loud. Now, pause the video and I want you to find two more senses that are being appealed to in this poem and right beside it, I want you to write the line from the poem that goes with that sense. So pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. So at this point, you should have written two more senses. Maybe you wrote sense of sight. Maybe you wrote uh, another sight. You can do two if you want to. And then the line from the poem that goes with that. The purpose of this sheet was just to get you reading a poem that has imagery and being able to see how another poet would use imagery uh, to make the reader get a picture in their mind. Okay, that's called visualization, if you remember. Your last job, so now you're finished this page, you can put it aside. This is your last job for today. This is your planning page for a poem that you're going to write next week. So what I want you to do for this one is to just brainstorm some ideas of things that you see, things that you hear, taste, feel, and smell as you've been on your spring break. And as you know, your spring break ended a few weeks ago. However, we are on an extended break. We can't go back to school due to COVID-19. Um, but that's okay, let's get rid of spring break and just talk about our entire break. What's it like being at home right now? What do you see when you're at home? What do you hear while you're at home? Taste, um, feel, and smell. You don't have to talk just about spring break. Let's just talk about our break in general. Okay, so when you think about things that you see while you're on your break, you might list things like, um, you see, I see computer screens, frankly. I've been making that website, so that's one thing I've been looking at a lot. I see empty streets because everybody is safely staying home. Those are just two ideas that I have. I bet you can list a whole bunch of other ideas of things that you see while you are currently on your extended break from school. What kinds of things do you hear while you're at home? Well, things that I hear are people working. <laughs> I'm working, my husband's working, and my children are working on their homework. So I hear people working, asking questions about um, things going on at work, going to meetings even. I hear uh, kids playing in the backyard. Kids are still going outside, but they're staying in their own spaces. Kids playing outside. And why don't you list a whole bunch of things that you hear right now while you were on your break at home away from school? These are just a couple ideas that I have, but see if you can come up with some different things of what you hear while you're at home. What do you taste while you're at home? Well, for me, I'm tasting a lot of home-cooked meals. We don't go out to eat anymore, and I have cooked more than I've ever cooked in my life. So there, I'm tasting a lot of home-cooked meals, and you know what? I'm also tasting freshly baked bread, baked bread. And I bet a lot of you are tasting that as well. Why don't you think of the things that you've been tasting while you are on your extended break? What does it feel like? Well, I'm a little nervous on this break. I don't know what's going to happen next. It makes me feel a bit uncertain. I'll put that too. But one thing that I do feel is very grateful. I'm grateful that I'm healthy. I'm grateful that I have a job. I'm grateful that my family is with me. I'm grateful that I can see my, my other family while video conferencing. So there's many things that I'm grateful for. What does it feel like for you being on your break? What emotions do you have while you're on your break? And finally, for me, things that I smell, well, how about popcorn popping, popping or freshly baked popcorn? Because we've been watching so many movies lately, I've been making a lot of popcorn. I've also been making cookies and muffins. Maybe you can make a list of all the things that you've been smelling while you're on your break. So the purpose of this page is to get you thinking about the things that you've seen, heard, tasted, felt, and smelt while you've been on your extended break away from school. I want you to just list, just like I did, you don't have to copy these words, please, come up with your own. Things that you see, list them here. You don't have to write full sentences. Things that you hear, you don't have to write full sentences. Just use the point form, please, just like we do at school. I want you to get as many ideas as you can, and we are going to use those ideas next week to write a poem based on imagery. So please get this page done today that talks about the different um, parts of a poem that appeal to senses and get your planning page done today. Okay, that'll actually be, be due by next week, Thursday. Make sure this is done because you're gonna be writing your poem next week. Okay, that's all for now. Bye.